All right, 5, 8 is curve fitting with quadratic models. We're going to use quadratic functions to model data. And then we're going to use quadratic models to analyze and predict. So you can use differences to analyze patterns and data. Okay. For a set of ordered pairs with equally spaced x values, a quadratic function has constant non-zero second differences. And I'll show you that below. So when you look at your x values, they're equally spaced, negative 3 to negative 2 to negative 1. They're all a step of 1. Okay, so that what that allows us to move forward. And then you look at x squared. When those values get plugged in, okay, you get 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9. Now, the first differences, when you're looking at first differences, okay, you're looking at the difference between the 9 and the 4. Okay, then you look at the difference between the 4 and the 1. And then the 1 and the 0. Okay, so the difference from here to here is 5. From here to here, 3. Okay. Then you look at your, you're looking at your second differences then. Negative 5 to negative 3 is 2. Negative 3 to negative 1 is 2. Negative 1 to 1 is 2. 1 to 3 is 2. Right? That is what your second differences are. So that is a constant value. Okay? Constant value. So that's what we're going to determine. We're going to use this process to determine if, if uh, the data provided is quadratic. And you can tell that it is because you can see the graph. This is doing it without the graph with just the values. All right, so let's determine it. So first you have to look and see if the x values are equally spaced. All right. So each x value increases by two units, so we know that we can move forward to check the differences of the y values or the f of x values. All right, so find the first differences. How far is it from negative 1 to 1, 1 to 7, 7 to 17, and 17 to 31? When you determine all of those, you get 2, 6, 10, and 14. Okay, so we just identified all the first differences. That's why I labeled it first. Now that we have our first differences, We need to analyze our second differences. Okay, it's a little glitch in the system there, but now you're taking the values from your first difference and determining the differences between those. For, so from 2 to 6 is 4. From 6 to 10, 4. From 10 to 14, also 4. Okay, so since the second differences are all the same with equally spaced x values, we can determine that this function with the data they provide of us is a quadratic. All right, let's look at the second one. Same concept. So 3 to 4 is 1, 4 to 5 is 1, 5 to 6 is 1, 6 to 7 is 1. So we just determined that the x values are equally spaced. They all increase by a unit of 1. Now find the first differences for the y or f of x value, depending on how they're presenting it to you. The difference between 1 and 3 is 2. 3 and 9 is 6. 9 and 27 is 18. And 2781 is 54. Okay, so we have our first differences. Check your second differences. So the, the distance between each of the first different values. Okay, so from 2 to 4 is 4. From 6 to 18 is 12. From 18 to 54 is 36. So since the second differences are not constant, the same value all the way across, okay, we know that this is not a quadratic function. Now remember also, in the original statement, it was the second differences cannot be equal to zero. Okay, So even though zero is a constant across, it would not be quadratic if the second differences were all zero. All right, so now there's your now you try. So determine whether it is and explain, explain why or why not. Your answer is either quadratic or not quadratic. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to modeling the data. Okay. So what we need to do is go back in our brains to how we did the line of best fit with linear functions. We're going to do the same thing with quadratic functions now. Okay. So when you do that, you need to use the graphing calculator. So I'm going to give you all the steps 
but you're not going to do these at home because most of you don't have the graphing calculator. All right? We will work on them in class. But the process, make sure you have diagnostic on so it can give you all the values that you need. All right, so to do that, you press second zero, scroll down to diagnostic on, press enter twice. Even got the fancy pictures of the keys for you. All right, then you enter the points into the calculator. So you press stat and enter. Okay, you type the values in each of their columns. So L1 is your independent value column or your X value, depending on how they present the information to you. L2 column is your dependent variable, so either your Y value or your F of X value. Then you use the calculator to find the equation. So it's going to find your line of best fit for the, it's going to curve fit is what we call it for quadratics. So you press stat, the right arrow, five and enter. After doing that, you're going to write the quadratic equation in standard form with the values it gives you. All right. So you're going to use AX squared plus BX plus C. That's standard form. You're going to fill in what it tells you for A, for B and for C. All right. Round values as you see fit. Right? You don't always want to go the whole numbers, though, so usually at least one or two decimal spots. And then you're going to use your equation that you just generated using the calculator. So you're going to plug in the value they give you to get a prediction. Okay, So those are the steps. You will use these in class. So if you want to write these down, write them down. Uh, maybe I'll even give you guys a printout. So the table shows the cost of circular plastic weighting pools based on the pool's diameter. All right, so we're going to find a quadratic model for the cost of the pool given its diameter. We're going to use the model to estimate the cost of a pool with a diameter of 8 feet. Okay, so x values, y values. So your independent variable value is 4, 5, 6, and 7. All right, your cost depends on the diameter, so those are your dependent values. All right, so press stat and enter and enter your values in each of the columns. All right, so L1 has 4, 5, 6, and 7. L2 has 1995, 2025, 25, and 3495. Okay, from there, we're gonna hit stat, right arrow, five, enter. All right, it's gonna bring up and calculate our quadratic. So your screen's gonna say quadratic regression. It's gonna give you your standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. It then gives you A, it gives you B, and it gives you C. So now you need to write those values in the quadratic on your paper. Okay, so I rounded everything to two decimal spots. All right, so that is your quadratic function. To finish rounding it out, you need to answer the question it asks. So it wants to know what the value is, what the cost should be with an 8-foot diameter. So I plug in 8 everywhere there's an X. And then I just simplify it by doing the math. Okay. When you get down to your final answer, you're going to end up with 49.4. Right? You need to write that in a word adventure answer. Don't just give me 49.4. What you need to do is you need to tell me the estimated cost of an 8-foot fo diameter wading pool would be $49.40. Okay? There are none of these for you to do tonight. But have these notes, have these steps, so that when you get to do them in class tomorrow with the graphing calculators, you're already prepared on how to do it.